Great. Well, good afternoon, everybody, and welcome to today's WeConnect International webinar. My name is Maggie Berry, and I'm the Executive Director for WeConnect International here in Europe, and I'm delighted that you have joined us for today's webinar, How to Prioritize Your Initiatives and Ideas with a Restricted Amount of Cash. This session is being presented by Leanne bonner Cook, Founder and CEO of Evolve IT Consulting, one of the WeConnect International Certified Women-Owned Businesses, and Leanne has uh, 20 years consulting experience and experience in collaborating with clients, both startups and large corporates, and in creating business and IT strategies. Today, she is going to be telling us more about innovating effectively within your business, uh, most especially in situations where there's a plan and an idea and a strategy which necessitate lots of things all happening um, at the same time, but when there is only a limited amount of time and cash available to execute everything. To keep background noise to the minimum, I am going to have more participants on mute, but you can use the chat functionality to ask any questions, and there'll be time for discussion and Q&A at the end. Leanne, I think, is going to talk for about 40 to 45 minutes, um, and the session is being recorded, so you will be able to listen back, and I will be able to share the slides afterwards. So, Leanne, I'm going to pass the presenter rights over to you um, and I think you should be hopefully in control. I am, yes. <laughs> Thanks very much. Over to you. Thanks very much. Thank you. Um, so first of all, thank you and welcome. Um, thank you for dialing in to listen to me today and thank you Maggie for the introduction. Uh, as business people, we are naturally full of good ideas and the enthusiasm to implement them. But often we do find ourselves in an awkward situation where we have a plan and a strategy, but it necessitates a million and one things to be done. Um, but equally, we've got a limited amount of cash and people that can actually implement them. So today, what I'm trying to do is talk through with you how we can actually capture all these good ideas, because we have fantastic ideas and then we do nothing with them, and how they can help innovate your business effectively. So my presentation essentially is going to talk you through a simple model that you can adopt after this to assist you through an ideas process. So essentially, why do we even need good ideas? Well, typically, um, we need good ideas to keep our business moving in the right direction and to take us on the path of our uh, desired outcome. So that plan typically is our business strategy and some goals that we're wanting to achieve that will take us from A to B. So when we have good ideas, they should all be aligned back into that journey of what we're aspiring to achieve. So really, everything that we do, idea-wise, essentially has to be aligned to our business objectives and goals. So on that journey, A is where we are today, B is the direction that we're heading in. But all ideas that we have need to be assessed against those plans and strategic goals to ensure that they are actually aligned. As our business goals drive the necessity for change in our business, and change enables our business goals. So an example of that is if you're in a business today and one of your strategic objectives is to double the size of your business, increase your revenue, um, well, that must lead to some change. So you may need more people. You may need more production environment um, available. You may need to put in different systems and technologies to enable that. So we're always looking at where we're trying to get to and assessing against that. So what I'd like to do for you today is go through how we look at the idea through our idea process. And we will go into more detail of each one as we go through uh, the session today. So this is our ideas funnel. So we have lots of ideas throughout our business. I don't think there's any such thing as a bad idea. And again, depending on the size of your organization, we can capture ideas from everybody within that organization. We should be listening, having means of communication to capture those ideas, watching what we're doing today, observing our business process, and our own actions and the way we carry out work. And that all guides us into capturing the work. And we'll go through more detail of these as we go through. Once we've got all these great ideas, we then need to analyze them. So we need to look at the business benefit that it will bring to us, how easy it is for us as an organization to be able to implement some of these things. Does it fit with our overall strategy? So this, in essence, is our filtration process to filter out the good ideas from the not so good. And not that they're not good ever, but they may not be good for now. 
will then prioritize all of those ideas for implementation. And we look at the implementation in three different forms. So it's transforming something is that implementation. So that transformation could be people, just people operating and doing things differently. It could be that you need increased capacity. So therefore, employ more people, work 24 hours, have shift patterns. It doesn't necessarily always need a, need a technology implementation. There's also process changes. So we could have an existing process that we need to transform slightly to add value to our overall business. And equally, it could be implementing a piece of technology. But all of the things we do, we need to recognize the benefits that it brings to our organization. So we need to be adding value in some, in some way, and that benefit needs to be driving us towards our business strategy. So my presentation today will go through this in more detail, and I'll give you some tools at the end which you can make use of, so I'll get Maggie to circulate those for you. But in essence, we are assessing the ideas. We look at the impact against our five-point model, and this ensures that they really are aligned in order to deliver our vision. So our vision sits in the middle, and that's driven by our business context, which is our business plan's strategic direction. Some of that business context could be things that are legislative. We have to do them. We've got no choice. Moving round clockwise on that model, we've then got the application portfolio. So what applications are we using today, and what should we use in the future? So we work with businesses of varying sizes, as Maggie said. Some companies, when they're in the startup stage, use Excel. It still is an application. It's still part of your strategy going forward, and you need to grow from that, potentially. So it could be that your application strategy is that you go to cloud-based solutions. So then you're assessing your ideas against those um, targets and those objectives in each of these areas. The technology infrastructure, so the degree of simplicity versus the functionality that you require. Do you manage it yourself? Do you go to a managed service provider? What's your strategy around your technology infrastructure? Again, when we come up with the points around that and say these are our points around technology, this is how we prioritize, every idea would assess back against those ideas. Organizational capability. So do your human resources and assets have the skills, knowledge, and capability, and more importantly, capacity to do what you need? Or do you actually need to start working with third parties? If you work with third parties, what's the criteria that you're looking for? How do you assess them? What do you want from a third party? And again, all of these would be listed in that objective area, and we'd measure against those when we're looking at our ideas. And finally, there needs to be some governance and funding. So have a robust process for um, processing your ideas, aligning and prioritizing the funding accordingly with them. And actually, they all interlink, so you can't omit them from any of your evaluations. And just a small story about that, we do work with some customers who will have decided on a piece of application, for example. So they will buy a, a, an application. It doesn't integrate with what they've got um, there already. It will take two years to implement, but their vision is that they've got it in six months. It doesn't fit with the technical strategy they've got because it's an on-premise solution and their strategy is cloud. So it really is important to look at all of these ideas, even if you're not buying or embarking on a new application, at this point in time, we still need to look at the governance, the funding, the organizational capability, whether it's taking data from an existing application. So typically, all of those things are involved. And today, as most businesses are driven by some form of technology, even more important to assess those ideas against this tool. And we'll keep coming back to that tool and saying that's what we need to assess against. So how do we even begin to capture ideas? Well, the challenge is to engage people at all levels in your business. So the best ideas do absolutely come from the bottom up. These are the people that are actually operating our processes, not us as managers or directors thinking about how the things should be done. And there's a big difference about how we think things should be done versus how they're actually done. And it's the how they're actually done are the people that we need to engage. And it's encouraging people to not be fearful of coming up with the ideas, no matter how small or how silly they seem, because they could all lead to us being more improved within our business. So encourage collaboration um, within the business. I quite often hear phrases when I'm out and about, like, because that's the way we've always done it when things are challenged. But that isn't necessarily helpful. And just because it's the way we've always done it, it doesn't mean it's the best way. And maybe in all our businesses, we could be adding value by changing them. So let's listen to them. Let's capture them. Let's assess them. And the assessment method is really straightforward and simple.
The result is then that we actually change the way we think, which allows us to challenge ourselves and others to drive improvement and remove waste. We'll come on to waste because I'm not talking about the general household rubbish, uh, and I will come on to them on the next slide. But it's doing things more effectively and more efficiently within our business. And today, particularly in smaller businesses and in larger ones as well, continual incremental improvements are what's delivering results. So gone are the days in the 90s where people were doing massive big transformation projects. They seem to be um, less prevalent today, and it more is this continual incremental improvement. Which again, coming on to the ideas that no idea is a bad idea, if you think you had 10 ideas, but they could all deliver a 1% benefit to your bottom line, suddenly 1% may not seem a lot, but actually 10 of those and 10% suddenly becomes very attractive to us and appealing. So why do we actually capture ideas? So capturing ideas in your business is important to ensure that you achieve the results. So what we actually need to do is log the ideas. And you can do that again in different methods depending on the size of your business. So it could be on whiteboards around different departments in the business. It could be during team meetings and collaboration sessions that you have. So there's various ways in which we log the idea. But in essence, what we would be doing is putting down our idea or an innovation. And an idea generally would remove some type of waste. And on the wheel here, it's probably a bit difficult to see in this model, but in the wheel here, we've got several areas of waste. And these are the eight wastes that we talk about. So we're looking at motion. And that's all to do with movement. And again, I'll send you these models and some ideas about what they look like at the, at the end of the presentation. We've got motion, we've got waiting, transportation, skills misuse, defects and rework, overproduction, overprocessing, and inventory. And they're the ideas that everything that we're doing with our ideas should be looking to remove one of those areas of waste that we're incurring in our business. And then other ideas that we have are really innovative. There's something that's totally different, a different business process we should maybe uh, implement, a different solution or a technology that we should implement. So what we need to do is teach people about the waste and how we identify it through reviewing their work. And I'll give you some examples of, of where I've come across um, ideas and we've removed these ways. So again, it's about encouraging the whole team, participating and really proactively looking at their work. But during assignments, one example was I was working with a financial controller, so expensive resource, um, and he was driving 25 miles to pick out a printout from a petrol pump. And the petrol pump was for the vehicles on site that were filling up with fuel. He would then print out the printout, drive the 20 miles back to the office, and then key all of that into a finance system to, to cross-charge the relevant departments for the fuel. So as an outsider then coming in to look at that process, I looked at it and thought, hang on, this seems a bit crazy. This man's probably paid £60,000 and he's driving around to pick up a printout to come back and key it into a system. So when you actually look at that, you've got waste in terms of motion. He was driving all the way out and back again. Skills misuse, a £60,000 roll driving to a different location to pick up a printout and rework because the printout's there and now he's rekeying it in. So my questions were, why are you, why are you doing this? And back to, because it's the way we've always done it. Well, have we challenged whether we can do something else? The data's sitting on the petrol pump. Have we spoke to the pump people to see whether we can get that data electronically transferred to us? No, I'm sure we can't. Anyway, a quick telephone conversation and 10 minutes later, we had the file electronically. So that took out probably the best part of an hour's journey. It took out probably another two hours in the need to rekey that data in. It also keyed out or removed the necessity for potential errors in that because we were over-processing that data and the more times we touch it, the more times we handle it, the more issues we're going to get. So actually by capturing that one idea, which probably seemed quite insignificant in the first place, suddenly we'd save four hours. That's half a day in your resources. At 60,000 pounds, that's still quite a significant amount of money. You imagine if you just did that three or four times within your organization, suddenly you start to find an extra person. And those people then can be redeployed onto value adding activities when we're sitting there saying we haven't got the time to do this or we haven't got the people that can do it. Uh, but if we actually appraise ourselves and the processes we're working on and capture these ideas, we can actually find uh, ways to free up time. 
So by implementing a strategic ideas process, what that actually gives you is, is a couple of things. It simplifies the tasks that we're doing by removing the unnecessary process step. It reduces the opportunity for errors. It also makes it easier for others to pick up during holidays and sickness covers or new people coming into the role. So in that case, even that I just gave you then, could you imagine that if somebody new came and drive here and go and find this pump and this is the location and this is what you have to do, as opposed to a file lands in this folder every Monday at this time and this is how you process it. So it's far easier to document that new process. It allowed a more effective use of time. The expensive resource could now be doing what they should be doing therefore better for the organization's bottom line. But I think by implementing, what you also do is you have a more engaged workforce because it isn't about it's the way we've always done it. It's about giving them the autonomy to feel engaged, to be able to come up with ideas and better ways of working. All of those small ideas actually come and help you drive some of your strategic business goals because it'll free up people. It'll increase your money on the bottom line. It'll allow you to invest in more things. There's smaller ideas, but there's also big ideas then as well around big systems. So it may be that you're a smaller organization today and you don't have a CRM, but you've got a list of all your customers in an Excel spreadsheet. Now that may be fine, but actually then when you're looking at, at marketing out to those people and somebody's today maybe manually emailing out to 40 or 50 people. Well, it's easy to manage and we can manage, but suddenly if that becomes 100 people, it's more complex. Then we start to need looking at a CRM system. That's then innovation. We're now implementing a new piece of technology. How are we going to do that? Where will it sit in our business? What are we looking for it to achieve? So they're ideas, but then they're bigger ideas and they affect more people. They probably cost more and it becomes an actual project. So how do we process these ideas and through the funnel that we talked about earlier? So we capture them. When an idea and innovation and opportunity is identified, the team can record it onto a log. They can say whether it's a removal of a waste or whether it's actually um, creating innovation. They can even say who's affected by it, what teams, what departments, what functions, what customers, what suppliers. And then it's like looking to see whether is it a cost saving to the business by, by implementing the idea? Does it remove some risk? What is it actually delivering to your business? So we recapture and record every idea on a log. A small improvement, like I said earlier, of 1%, they add up. So nothing is stupid and everything should be considered. We then analyze it. So where we analyze it, there's some things that we can just fix straight away. So another example I have here is that there was um, a particular individual, they were doing quite a lot of printing. They were the sole user of the printer in a particular office. It was two floors away from where they were sat. But then the time wasted running up and down those two flights, and it's not just the time wasted of going to the photocopier, it's the chats that you have on the way, it's the chats that you have on the way back, and suddenly the time of the person involved is extended incredibly throughout a day or a week. So again, that is a quick fix. We can do it here and now. Move the photocopier and sit it on the floor right next to her because actually she is the key user or the main user of that photocopier. Suddenly we've saved it costs and money. There's also, we can evaluate the ideas further. So if it's something that's more complicated, we may need a team of people to work on it. We may need to involve other departments, other functions, and we can evaluate it further through an ease and a benefits matrix, which we'll come on to again later in the presentation. And that will ensure, again, that we assess it back uh, to our five-point measuring guide to say, does it affect our technology? Does it affect the applications? Have we got the people in the organization that can deliver this? Have we got the funding to be able to deliver it? And more importantly, is it going to put us on the path to delivering our overall business strategies and goals? Once we've done that, we'll throw some out, we'll keep some in, and then we'll have an implementation plan. And that implementation plan then will help us um, plan out what we're going to do. So then we'll have a project plan the resources and what funding we need to actually deliver those. And a failure to plan is a planning to fail. It won't happen by luck. And quite often when we have good ideas and we think we're going to implement something, we do it and then we get waylaid and then something else diverts us. So actually when we are sure that it's gonna give us a business benefit and deliver us an objective, let's plan it properly and make sure we've got the right resources and the right funding on that project. What that leads to is a benefit, so we can measure all of our benefits uh, and measure it in terms of a return on investment to our organization. Throughout our assessment stage, when we've analyzed it, we're going to say, well, something's going to cost us £10,000 to implement, but actually we're going to get a business benefit of 
£10,000 year on year on year. So, of course, it makes sense to do it. There's a big business benefit uh, for the cost that's incurred. So we look at that. Obviously, when we start off on the track of an implementation, things change. So we have lessons learned for the future. What didn't we assess correctly? What did we assess correctly? Where did we benefit? Let's now communicate all those benefits back to the business to encourage more thinking and more ideas to come out. Then we come on to prioritizing the ideas. So when we've prioritized our ideas, we can then say, okay, these are the things we need to do this week. So they're what we class as a remedial action. So fix things that are broken, they're quick hits, they're remedial actions, and there's very little in terms of improvement. So an example of that is the photocopier that I was telling you about. It was very quick to do. This month improvements, so making some existing systems and processes and routines better. So eliminate unnecessary activity, reduce errors, eliminate significant waste and non-value adding activities. So the story around the petrol pump and printing off, that did all of those things. It wasn't big, it wasn't difficult to do, and we can still do it very um, cost effectively, but it has a bigger business benefit. And then we've got larger term changes, which is new processes and systems. So these are step changes and improvements in your operational performance, um, different approaches, and it leads to innovation and for you to achieve your business goals. So these tend to be uh, more strategic thinking. And this could be the implementation of the new system, a new CRM system, a new finance system. And in these cases, these projects will need a more in-depth analysis and a project evaluation model running on them. Again, I will circulate the model at the end of this. We don't have time to run through it today. But if you're making an investment of £50,000, you're obviously going to give that a lot more attention through your assessment phase than you are if you're investing £5,000. And again, depending on the size of your, your organization. You may need to go out to tender. So which suppliers are you going to go to? Who are you going to tender with? What are your business requirements? So it's understanding all of that when we start going into uh, more complex situations. But as an initial idea prioritization um, method and process, there's a couple of things that we need to look at. So first of all here, we need to look at the benefits criteria. So the benefit typically, and we can change this criteria as to what's important to your business and what's in line with your strategic goals. But typically we're looking for a cost reduction in something, or we're looking to improve and grow our revenue. We're also looking for repeatability and transferability, because again, if the benefit is to one person, a single individual, you may or may not do it. If it's across several functions and multiple areas, you may do it. But again, it's looking at that whole business process. An example that I have there is um, I did some work for a company, and they were looking at um, processing of invoices. And the way that they looked at it from a, from a transfer the uh, ability point of view is that it's actually only in one function, but it wasn't in one function because the one function was a uh, accounts payable and they were physically inputting the invoices and preparing them for payment. But actually when you look at that process and who was involved in the authorization of those invoices, um, the signing them off to say that they'd had them, maybe the matching in the goods receipt notes, and that whole end-to-end -end process actually encapsulated quite a lot of roles. Again, when you look at the cost reduction, we were looking at the cost of an AP clock at 15,000, but actually what about the person processing the invoices, doing the goods receipting, and physically manually authorizing them to stay in the process? They're probably paid a lot higher salary. So when we talk about this and we're looking at the benefits, let's look at the whole process and the people and the numbers that are affected in it. And then how much time are we gonna save by implementing our idea? And then after that, we've got the ease. And the ease criteria is how easy is it as for us to actually do this. And again, this is where we'd come back and we'd assess it against our five-point tool to say, well, how many people are affected, which areas are affected. Of those five points, which one is going to be impacted by this change or idea that we've got? So it's a natural quick way of prioritizing ideas for those that are costly. And we'd always recommend undertaking a full evaluation, as I say, um, for those that are more complex. But in this case, what we're looking at is the project duration, and again, change these to what you want to. The effort to implement, so who will implement it? Have you got the um, resources internally? Do you need the external uh, resources to implement? That comes into the cost, so you've got your cost of your internal people, the external people, potentially any software, hardware, process changes. 
And then what's the change risk to the business? So where is the impact to your business? Because when we get ideas, quite often people don't think about their organization and its ability to be able to accept change. So if you've got an idea and it affects back to the benefit, lots of functions and across a wide range of business areas, and then something else does as well, well, actually, that's quite risky now because now we're introducing a lot of change over a short period of time. Is it really feasible? And it could be that the ease it has a significant business impact, so we push it to be later on down our prioritization chain. So that's how we start to prioritize. And then once we've prioritized those, what we actually do is we can plot then all of our ideas. So what we have in that top um, left-hand corner is the proceed quick wins. So these are all the things that are easy to do but going to give us a high business benefit. So both of the examples that I gave you were really easy to do, but they would give a big business benefit in terms of freeing up people's time and resources and therefore money. We've also got things that are easy to implement in the bottom quadrant where we've got the orange consider in the bottom left. They're easy to implement, but they're low business benefit. So we may or may not decide to do them, and that would depend if we have capacity. If they're easy and we're going to get some benefit, we may choose to do them. However, on the bottom right where we've got reject, that's not easy to implement. They're really difficult and there's a really low business benefit. So actually those ones would be rejected straight away. But back to the person that generated that idea, not to go back to them and say we've rejected it, it's rubbish or, you know, why? And give them some rationale about why their idea was rejected, but to still keep encouraging that thinking and that logging of ideas and that prioritization of the ideas. Then in the top, right hand corner we've got the strategic ideas so they're not easy to implement but they give us a really high business business benefit and they'll be really big things that you're going to do in your business so it could be a complete change of strategic direction a brand new system implementation so they're typically a high cost as well so these are harder to implement and these will become our full projects and should be planned in alignment with our strategic roadmap. So these are the ones that fall into this quadrant that I would suggest we do a fuller project evaluation on as we discussed earlier. And also when we go back to our five point metrics when we're assessing these, obviously we need to consider time as quite a critical factor in these. Um, it's often underestimated how long things will take us. So if we want to double the size of our business in two years, and we know that that'll have an impact on our system and our technology and our infrastructure that we've got there today, well, we can't wait until four months before we're, we're aiming to achieve that to go and replace something. So again, by pilling in these ideas, looking at the, at the timeline, how long is it going to take us, what's it going to do, it'll tell you when you need to start it. So again, quite often we work with customers that it's like, oh my God, we've got a need and it's now. But actually it's going to take a year to get to that point of implementation. So again, by facilitating these ideas sooner, you can see where they fit with what you're trying to achieve as your strategy. So really then, just to summarize here, um, Capture all of the great ideas that you and your people have on a log. Um, you know, encourage everybody within your organization to come up with those ideas and really communicate back to them. And I like to filter out the good ones from the bad ones. And those ones you're not going to take forward, understand the why and encourage more ideas to come out. Then we've got to implement them. So we're planning the time, we're planning the resources, planning the funding that's required to implement them. That suddenly starts to then narrow things down. So if you've got £100,000 or £10, whatever it may be, you can look at your ideas, look at the cost, look at the benefit, back towards the prioritization, and actually which ones are you going to do when with the time, the money, and the funding that you've actually got. And the overall benefit here is that it will deliver your business plan and strategic goals through both small and incremental changes, but also through big innovative projects as well. So really that's me in a, in a nutshell. I, it's quite complex. I say I will send you some models and things after, but I would like to thank you for taking the time to listen to me and I hope you found the session of some benefit. I'll ask Maggie to circulate the models we've discussed with you, but also if you want to visit the website, you can see some information on the website. Uh, and I am more than happy to speak to anybody about more specific business problems or challenges that they're facing. And to any WeConnect member, um, we can have a 15 minute pre-arranged conference call uh, to discuss those. So I'll open up for any questions that you may have.
Leanne, thank you so much. Um, a, a bit of a race through the slides, but thank you. There's so much information there, and yes, we absolutely can share share the models with everybody so that you can have um, have a look at them in a bit more detail and, and can have a think about how they might be able to support um, your business. I, 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 one of the things that was um, interesting to me was that wheel of the eight things that you need to consider in all the different areas where there's potential waste in a business. That's certainly given me um, a, few, a few things to think about. Um, I had one question and one comment from, from my perspective. Certainly one of the things that Leanne spoke about is if you do, if you are going out to tender, you know, and looking for different suppliers, please remember you can absolutely ask me if there are any women-owned businesses out there that could potentially help you with whatever product or service you're looking for. So please do try and include uh, another of your women-owned business peers in, in that. Um, and Leah, I was just interested a bit more about the capturing of ideas, um, and almost on that very last bit that you that you kind of touched on about encouraging everyone to share ideas. Because I know sometimes in larger organisations or even where there's teams in hierarchy, how you can encourage more junior members of staff or people who haven't been there very long to share their ideas, and it's more of a people question rather than anything about tech, tech specifically. I just wondered if you had any top tips about that, about getting people to really open up and chip in their two penny worth and, and uh, absolutely kind of I, I mean i think it initially is about it's about educating your workforce really so that they understand so when we talk about the waste and i'll give you more details on what we what we mean by each of those eight ways so we'll send some cards out with those on and it'll go into more detail about what we're looking for so people quite often come to work and they blindly just do the tasks that they've got ahead of them for their day um, so once you educate them on what we mean by the waste and what they should be looking for what you're actually doing is giving them the ability to challenge both what they're doing and what other people around them are doing. And then typically what we actually would do, depending on the size of the organization, is you could just email your ideas to, ideas at, company name, or in some organizations, in bigger organizations, we'd have a whiteboard on the wall, which basically would just be your ideas and innovation log. Teams would go and they're just right on the board, their idea or innovation, the type of improvement that it was. So was it removing one of these eight ways or was it a new innovation? who they believe was affected, who it was logged, and then they'd have a team meeting, sit down and say, well, okay then, this one's a good idea, let's take it forward into analysis. Some of them we may get rid of then because there's a good reason on rationale for why we do it the way we do. But it's not, it's not stifling that behavior by saying, well, that's the way we do it, that's what we do. It really is looking at them. So first of all, I think it's engaging the workforce to, to understand what it is that they're looking for, giving that, them the autonomy to be able to challenge and come up with ideas. But then I think more important is about listening and evaluating whether it really is a good idea or not and not yes. poo-pooing any ideas that people come up with and then you start to encourage that as a behavior within your organization yes absolutely and i think that's um i know from from an individual point of view that's often my first reaction about things is to kind of go oh that that's not possible but actually you know very quickly i'm like actually it, it probably is that's just a personal behavior for me that i am um, for me that i know so we've got a question another question from sue just asking whether there are specific methods to set up how to analyze and track the ideas and i, I don't know if that's shared in, in one of the models or if there's anything that you anything actually you can say about um that sort of the actual analysis and tracking the ideas yeah so i mean for, so, so for the ideas i mean think we, we then would track them and then i say look at that benefits and these criteria uh, throughout the full project evaluation model which i will share as well that does go into more detail so i'll say well what's the project what's the objective here um how doable is it so in terms of do we have the people how strategic is it does it fit with the with the business strategy and then it comes into a financial page and all those financials you would list to say well we need one of these and we need one of those and that would come up with the financial we do it on a best case and a worst case so then it would basically pull through to a front sheet that says, well, sh strategically, this is the right thing to do, 80%. Uh, doability, we don't have the resources or the experience, so maybe it's 50%. But best case and worst case from a financial perspective and what your return on investment will be. And again, there are models like that that enable you to, to analyze it. Typically, again, it's about having teams and people involved in that analysis, so depending on what that idea is, it could be that you do it in isolation within your own team, but also look at who is downstream and upstream of your process, so who's feeding into your process, who's receiving the output from the process, how will they be affected, maybe you need to engage with those people as well in the team. Yes, it's a big, there's a big old complex structure there of looking at everything Absolutely. and all the different 
yeah, all the different aspects. Thank you so much. And then I've had a couple of comments. Somebody, um, it was Alex, who said, great presentation, Leanne. Thanks very much. Sorry, she had to, she's got to jump out to go to another, uh, another meeting. And Heather had just said, pick, she said she picked up one really good point or a reminder maybe of more about looking at the sales process and cost to market and being, uh, possibly looking at being more creative uh, in in this kind of process. So so that's great. Um, are there any more questions that anybody would like to ask on the call just now? You can please do use the chat functionality. That would be um, that would be really that would be really helpful. And and Leanne, uh, the, the models that you're sent through, what kind of, are they in a kind of a PDF format that people can easily look through, or what what kind yeah, of yeah, they're at, they're Excel. Uh, for, oh, so okay. be a couple of PDF, couple of Excel. Um, I'll send those all through to you, Maggie. And then if if you want to circulate them, and then if anybody needs any more detail, then then obviously you know come back. What I mean with all of these things, it, it is about um, the engagement of your workforce. It's about evaluating, educating them, and enabling them to do it. Um, you know, there are programs that we run to teach people about the tools. So when we said, how do we analyze? Well, there's lots of ways to analyze. So when we're distinguishing even between the value-added activity and non-value-added activity, and the example I gave around the guy at the petrol station, that was absolutely non-value-added activity, but where do you begin to know what that looks like? Yeah. So it is about the whole education process. There's also um, tools and techniques that you can use to um, really drill into um, an idea, because sometimes as well when we come up with an idea, it's actually what we're doing is we're coming up with a, um, an idea to fix a problem rather than looking at the root cause of the problem. Yes, indeed, and that's doing the right analysis. Abs absolutely. Yes, okay. Fantastic. Well, are there, I've just, if there's any fi are there any final questions? We'll give everybody just a couple of more, um, a minute or two to ask any more final questions. But we we will make this recording available so you can listen back, as well as the slides, and then as well as the, the models that Leanne is is going to send to me. But I don't think we'll look at there's any more questions, Leanne. So um, all it may say, thank you very much. That was really interesting, and it's. Um, it's especially pertinent for some of the stuff that we're looking at within even just within the We Connect business, um, which because it's so global can be uh, complex in its own right because we all work very virtually. And I'm, I'm going to share these tools when I get them with the head office team because I think that might be helpful for us if something's coming up just now. So um, that's brilliant. And I will reiterate the offer to everybody that they can um, they can get in touch with you directly and that there's an offer of 10% off all services until the end of June. So thank you very much. Um, Leanne, for your time, and thank you to everybody who's dialed in today. Uh, and I will follow up with the recording and a copy of the slides and the handouts. But thank you very much, everybody. Thank Thanks, you. Leanne. Cheers. Thank you, everybody. Thank you. Thank you. Thanks. Thanks. Bye. Bye-bye.